Welcome to the channel people. Today we're kicking off the second week of Makeover May with my featured co-host Crafty Kathy and we have a bunch of distress inspiration for you. Let's jump into it. For our first project we're going to be making over this old what I can only assume toilet paper holder <laughs> and it's in the shape of a house. It's kind of farmhouse. I know I know we're on the distress week but you know we're going to do something very simple just to give this a little love and make it a little updated but look at the size of this. This is the best the best long clip I could get. To start off, I'm like, let's use our one, two, three BIM primer. This is my favorite. It is also really easy to use and dries quick. So I needed to take the thing apart. And in the process, I have shenanigans going on behind me. Harley was having a day with mommy outside and daddy outside just rolling around acting like a wild animal. Enough about the dog. Okay, she's a Bernese Mountain dog also, by the way, before you guys start bombing me in the comments, <laughs> want to know what she is. And this is that moment where I'm like, everything's going so great. And then it wasn't. <laughs> I lost the screw. It fell between the table. Me and him are scrounging around the grass. We may never really know what happened to that screw people. We may never know. But like the trooper that I am, I carried on and thought I will improvise later on down the road because that's what we do around here. And then, yep, then I run out of primer. <laughs> so then I go grab my Dixie Bell Boss because this is going to bleed. This is definitely a bleeder. That's the type of wood this is. And I don't want to have to deal with Tannis later. And all the extra bare wood that I didn't prime, I then rub this all over it. And while that's drying, I'm taking these three colors and we're going to, instead of doing, oh, and I didn't like the color of that Nimbus, like when it's done, I need a little bit darker. But here's the opposite side of those shelves that I showed you in the beginning. One side is smooth, the other side looks like this. It looks like some old paneling from the 60s. We're going to use this to our advantage and we're going to paint this on this side in different colors. But I'm taking water and kind of making more of a stain versus a paint. Plus, I feel like doing stuff like this, it's quicker, it's easier, and it gets the job done super fast. So I add a bunch of water to the paint to thin it out and then just go over and do different colors for the slats. So once we open our door, gonna get a little bit of a wow effect in there like well there's a lot of color because I'm keeping the outside fairly simple now while these are drying it's time to go back to our bigger project and we're gonna take some of this all-in-one satin black if you have Matt go right ahead I was trying to use what I had on hand because for Maker May I already went over my budget okay so I'm at the point now where we're trying to save a few pennies I took this black and went around the edges because that's where I'm gonna be distressing and then I'm taking this hurricane gray and I'm going to do the top hat of the house and the bottom foot of the house because we're going to have in between like that Nimbus color, but a little bit darker. I also painted the inside of this, this dark hurricane gray as well. If you're not familiar with Dixie Belle paint, I'm a huge fan of it. Usually it just takes about one coat and it levels itself out so you don't have a whole bunch of blah, 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 brush strokes. <laughs> now for the middle, like I said, we're gonna take that Nimbus paint and we're just gonna go over the middle area. We're keeping this fairly simple. I want whoever's going to purchase this for it to be able to match their decor. I know I could get wild like I usually do, people. Don't be disappointed. I promise it's gonna be beautiful and you will have some inspiration from the piece. Now we're gonna get some distress going and I'm just taking a high grit sandpaper and wrapping it around my little sandpaper block and I'm gonna go over this entire piece, giving it a nice distressed look on the doors, on the bottom, on the top, all the things. We're just going to rub this everywhere and get a really nice distressed edge. Then I'm taking my sandpaper block because it is a 220 grit and I'm going over everything to smooth out all the paint before we put the finishing touches, our sealer, and our raised stencil right here on the door. This way, once you sell it, it feels really nice to the buyer and it's all professional. You don't have lumpy bumpies everywhere. And it's always a good idea to take your microfiber cloth and get any extra bits out of it. 
Now we're gonna create our raised stencil and I'm using joint compound mixed with a little bit of acrylic paint for this. Nothing too fancy schmancy people, just some regular everyday stuff you have around the house. And we're going to accomplish a beautiful raised stencil using this stencil. I picked up from Amazon. This little tool is just something I got in a pack from Ross. I do browse with brandies each week where I go into different stores. We look for DIY products and Ross is a really good place to get some craft supplies. They have little tools like this and little kits with paintbrushes and they're easy to throw away if you forget to wash them off or whatever because you only paid a couple bucks for them. And for this design, I'm just taking the rose and the darker gray and alternating them all the way down the front of the door for this piece. I wanted to keep the design fairly simple since it is distressed and I'm trying to focus on more of the distressing than my artistic ability. I did have other ideas for this, but again, I had to hold back. Okay, focus on the distress so look at how beautiful this turned out and that's gonna be it for this one people let me know what you think Welcome back for the second week of Makeover May, people. If you're just coming into the playlist, welcome. I'm Brandy, your host, and I am going to be featuring different co-hosts all month long to give you flipping inspiration with different themes. This is something I like to do on my channel to give back to the subscribers each year. And if you want a chance to win a $30 Amazon gift card, because I am giving away four of them, just follow the rules right here. And at the end of the month, the winners will be announced. And don't forget to stop on over and give Crafty Kathy some love and answer her giveaway question as well as mine. And this week's giveaway question is, what is your favorite thing to make over? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. For our next two projects, that's right, people, the mason jars have returned. And I have some distressed information. <laughs> distressed info. Infra inspiration we're gonna need some tape and we're gonna tape off the top and the bottom i know it just looks like we're kind of taping off the middle right here but i promise it's the top and the bottom and then we're gonna need some strips this is entirely up to you but i'm cutting like six total and then we're gonna make little stripes down here at the very bottom recently in some of my browsing videos i have showed a new style i guess emerging where they're showing vases with three different patterns I thought let's go bright with this one and add in some distressing and for the bottom part I'm using all the colors that you've seen there and creating a striped effect. I wasn't entirely happy with this process because I like using actual glass paint. Chalk paint is a pain in the butt. Acrylic paint is worse. Trying to paint glass it comes off easy and you got to do several coats with the chalk paint. I mean you get there but it's a process. It took me about four total coats to get this on here like this and that was with the top solid color and the stripes at the bottom and then I had to go back and paint this like this. Do not, whatever you do, take painter's tape to try and trim over the paint that you already have on there. It will peel right off that glass. There is no fuzzy inside feeling about this. Unless you're going to put a sealer over top of those layers, let that dry 24 hours, and then you want to put the tape over it. But other than that, get your straight hand down. <laughs> try and be as steady as you can and keep the lines as straight as you can. In the center, we're just decoupaging a napkin on there. I was not very particular and precise about it. I just throw it on there because we are distressing this. So I was not worried if some of the napkin was gonna peel up, but I did make sure that I did a layer over top the napkin before I started you know, getting all the extra little bits that were around <laughs> that I didn't want on there and distress. And I'm it. just gluing twine around the top to kind of finish this off. Now I do want to add in here, if you go back like I am here and using the sandpaper to get your extra bits off, be mindful that your napkin is completely dry. Otherwise, it's just going to slide on your glass. When I was happy with the way I trimmed it, I then took the sandpaper and gently went in between the paint and in between the napkin and just in random spaces and pulled it off. And then another little trick I see people use as a permanent marker and add some faux distressing lines. So I was not a huge fan of this. 
I wasn't a huge fan of it when I watched people do it in the videos, but I had to give it a go. You know what I mean? I had to give it a go. For our second jar, we're going to take this Rust-Oleum chalk linen and just give it one go, one layer, and then take this home decor crackle paints and give it a go. Give it one full layer. Let this dry and make sure you got all your paintbrush bits out of there because it doesn't seem to matter how long I'm doing YouTube or making projects. My paintbrushes still hate me, people. It hasn't changed. It it just it hasn't changed. Not even a little bit. This stuff does not take that long to dry. So I'm saying about 20, 30 minutes. Once it's finished, you can then take whatever color paint you want and do a layer over it and your effect will start almost immediately. For this, I wanted to leave it kind of stripey. I wanted to leave it even more distressed just with the way that I was painting the piece. And I really love how this turned out. So here it is when it's all painted, right? And then here it is once the crackle kind of like everything settled and separated. So beautiful. For our last project, this is actually the top of an old child's dresser that I flipped a while back. It was holding a mirror. It is in bad shape. I'm going to fix it. And we're going to turn it into a shelf by using this one by eight. I started out just by placing this on top of the board and I'm going to give it about an extra three inches on each side. Not getting too wild, just extra three inches. And I also, I've had a lot of questions about the miter saw that I use in my inbox, emails. I use this one that slides out at seven inches, people. It runs about 189 on sale at Home Depot and I love it because I can, you know, move it around and make it do what I want it to do. <laughs> So if you're watching and you're one of those and you're wondering, and I've even showed it in some of my browsing videos when I go to Home Depot because I get a lot of questions about what I use. So I hope that helps. Before I attach this onto our shelf, I got to wood glue it up and I got to tighten things up because it is just wonky and unstable and I'm just going ham with the wood glue. So forgive me. Then I clamped this on down and I left it to dry for 24 hours. There was a hole in here and I thought let's put it down in there in case somebody wants to put this in the bathroom or in the kitchen you could hang a little decorative towel or something on this piece. So I took some wood glue I shoved the dowel on through the little hole and I also took some wood filler and went on the ends of the hole to kind of seal it in and let this dry as well. I was really going to just kind of fill both sides up with the wood filler and I'm like, man, we could kind of make a little, you know, make a little hand piece. I don't know. What would you guys have done? Would you have left it? Or do you think that the add in the dowel was a good idea? Anyhow, more of the black spray paint. Okay, black spray paint on around and everywhere. I just wanted this one to kind of have options because I know I wanted to distress this more than I distressed the other piece. I'm using the same hurricane gray paint and I'm only doing one coat of this and not even a thick coat, like just a coat because I'm coming back in with a whitewash over it and then I'm going to just pull it back. All this is is some water and some Waverly's plaster paint, chalk paint, and that's it. And I'm just wiping it back. Once this was dry, then it is time to bring on in our mix of joint compound and more plaster paint. <laughs> I then took our stencil and laid it on down the long arm pieces at the bottom of our shelf. Smoothed it on out and then peeled it on back. And these just came out so beautiful. They added a little something something to the shelf, especially once we add our distressing. Now I need to create hangers on the back here so we can hang our shelf on the wall. So I'm using these little hammer tooth hangers. They're super easy to use. Just make sure that you try not to have them too crooked. I am definitely guilty of that. I'm then taking our sandpaper, once again, wrapping around our little block, and we are gonna go ham all over this little gem and just sand it on out, creating a beautiful distress look.
And that's gonna be it for today, people. I hope you got some learning and entertainment out of the video. Kathy, thank you so much for hanging out with me this week. People, don't forget to come back next week because I have modern inspiration for you with a new co-host and a new giveaway. Until next time, bye.